Alleluia, Christ is risen. I've often thought about that greeting. We kind of just, ra- we kind of just rattle that off. But when, if you can imagine those first followers of Jesus, not only on Easter evening when Jesus appeared, in, but every Sunday when they would gather for Eucharist, they would probably say, it's not so much Christ is risen. It was probably like, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That amazement, that wonder at that unbelievable good news. And every Sunday after that, a celebration of that good news. Christ is risen. We are coming to the end of our 50 great days, the 50 days of the Easter season, a week of weeks. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and the large candle, the Paschal candle, burns for those 50 days. Uh, You may already know this, the word Paschal is the Hebrew word for Passover. It reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. The Paschal candle is usually lighted in the darkness of the Easter vigil, this one candle pushing back the darkness. And that light of Christ, that candle burns for these 50 days, the great 50 days of the Easter season, It also burns at all baptisms, because as Paul says in Romans 6, we are baptized into Christ's death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might walk in newness of life. So we have been baptized into Jesus' death on the cross. We are baptized into Jesus' resurrection. And then the third time that that candle is lighted is at all funerals. That same promise, we are baptized into Christ's death and we are baptized into Christ's resurrection. So that's when that candle burns. At the end of the great 50 days is Pentecost, which is next Sunday's festival, the third major festival of the church year. We have Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. So you better go out and get all your Pentecost cards to send to your relatives. Uh, we, we forget about Pentecost, that, that third major festival of the church year. So that's where we are, almost done with the Easter season. In our gospel today, Jesus talks about oneness. And he's thinking of oneness that his disciples need to uh, have in their own lives. I think he's talking about the oneness of the church, which was sort of there until the year 1054. That's when the Eastern, the Orthodox Church, Uh, broke away from the Roman, the Western church. So in the year 1054, we had two halves, the Roman church in the West, the Eastern church in Constantinople. And then in the 16th century, a guy by the name of Martin Luther never, ever, 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 ever wanted there to be a Lutheran church. He wanted to reform the Lutheran church in accordance with scripture and the apostolic faith. And as we know, Luther got kicked out. And so he reluctantly had to organize an evangelical church, the good news people. And then that was another, so the 16th century was another split. So now we have the the Western Roman church, we have the Eastern Orthodox church, we have uh, Lutherans, we have the Reformed tradition, Calvin, Zwingli. And then when Christianity got to the United States, we do what we do best all these different groups started, you know, somebody in their backyard would start a church and and all of that. The oneness that Jesus prays for. But I also think that if you have been watching and listening to the news, I think we as a land, as a country, struggle with oneness or lack of oneness. And it seems to me uh, uh, not to make Uh, not to oversimplify things, but when we see this dysfunction in our country, whether it's people protesting, whether it's people mentally ill, uh, shooting and killing innocent people at a supermarket, killing innocent children and teachers, it seems like people are so obsessed with themselves. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? Do I like what you are doing? Do I dislike what you are doing for the effect that it has on me? 
And I think whether it's road rage on a freeway or whether it's getting angry with a person in the supermarket line that maybe cuts in front of you or whether it's somebody uh, taking a weapon of, of mass uh, assault and killing people, we have become a nation obsessed with ourselves. What am I thinking? And we even do that in the church. When I was a boy, uh, the major crisis was if somebody didn't like a new hymn. You know, they wanted to sing their favorite hymn. We moved beyond that, but church lives, what do people get upset about? Do they get upset about Jesus? Do they get upset about ministry in the neighborhood? Do they get upset about ministry in the wor world? They get upset about themselves. I, I don't like the color of the carpeting. I don't like what they've done with the painting in the, in the parish hall. I don't like that their new pastor. Not that I ever experienced that. But. And I think Jesus' oneness is, is, a, is a ministry, a mission for us as followers of Jesus. Your faith is not all about you. Your life at St. Peter Church is not all about you. It's all about Jesus. It's all about being Jesus. It's all about Jesus pulling people together into a oneness that is more than me. And so your faith this morning, your faith is more important to me than my faith. Hard, that's hard to do. Your faith this morning is more important than my faith. So the next time you have a congregational meeting, when you're sitting there thinking, what I think is not the issue, what Jesus thinks is the issue. And as a country, what I think, what I like, what I don't like, what I'm upset about, that's not the issue. What is Jesus upset about? Believe me, I think he's upset. What is Jesus upset about? And what does Jesus feed us, fill us with his love to make that difference in the world? Not easily done. We need all the help we can get, which is, comes from there and comes from the word of God. Now I don't have to do a sermon, yay. Uh, commemorations this week, today, May 29th, we commemorate Yuri Travanovsky, who was a Slovak hymn writer, took the doctrines of the Lutheran Church, translated them into Slovak languages, many hymns, some of the hymns in our hymnal are from Travanovsky. Tuesday, May 31st, the visit of Mary, the the mother of Jesus, to her relative, Elizabeth, the visitation. And what does Elizabeth say when she sees Mary coming? Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And blessed am I to behold this. And the baby, John the Baptist, leaps in her womb as she comes into the presence of Mary, pregnant with Jesus. So we remember that visit of Mary and the words of the Ave Maria, which Luther had absolutely no problem with, uh, all come from Luke, from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Wednesday, June 1st, we commemorate Justin, a martyr at Rome. Uh, he was uh, uh, influenced by the Christians in Ephesus, and he was jailed for practicing an unauthorized religion, Christianity. He refused to renounce his faith and was beheaded. Friday, June 3rd, we commemorate the Martyrs of Uganda. 1886, 32 young men in Uganda were burned at the stake because they refused to renounce their faith in Jesus. And then lastly, uh, Friday, June 3rd, we commemorate John the 23rd, Pope John the 23rd. And when I was a boy, he, he became Pope, I think, when I was in high school. When I was a boy, we Lutherans didn't really talk about doing things with other groups of Christians. Pope John the 23rd was the guy who said, you know, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We ought to be 
talking like that, acting like that. And somebody who said to him after he had started the ecumenical renewal, they said, Holy Father, uh, where did you get this idea? And he said, oh, it wasn't my idea. I just opened the window and let the Holy Spirit in. And so today, the relationships between Lutherans and Roman Catholics and Episcopalians and Baptists, he's responsible for a lot of that. We Lutherans didn't come up with the idea of actually cooperating with other Christians. It was Pope John the Twenty-Third. And so when I was in Rome decades ago, I had a chance to go there. And I went to St. Peter, and I found the stairway going down to the crypt. And I looked around, and I found his grave, and I said a prayer. I gave thanks for John the 23rd and for the difference he had made in the Lutheran Church. And the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, of which we are part, is the only denomination in the United States that has official intercommunion arrangements with other groups of Christians. We have it, I can't even remember how many now, but Episcopalians, Methodists, United Church of Christ, Presbyterians, Moravians, over the years we've done, and it's after many years of dialogue and discussion. Whereas I, when my friend is on vacation at an Episcopal church in Pasadena, I preside at his Episcopal church. I celebrate Eucharist at his Episcopal church. I could even be called as the rector of his Episcopal church. He could be called as your next pastor. That intercommunion. We are the only denomination that does that. We should be proud of that, and uh, we should do more of that. Okay. At the time of Holy Communion, uh, please come down the center aisle, receive the sacrament, return to your seat by the side aisles. And if you do not wish to receive the sacrament, cross your hands over your chest to receive a blessing. And I think I've said this before, I stand and I sit where I'm used to standing and sitting for Eucharist in the liturgy. I don't know when you stand and sit, so um, we may not be doing that at the same time. I, I didn't mean, well, I did mean to digress, but we are, we are at a point in our country in our life together we need to talk about these things and we need to talk about them in the church this is where we talk about it this is where we disagree about it this is where we listen for the voice of jesus we prepare for worship by confessing our sins i ask you to please stand and face the place of holy baptism Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Let our eyes shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out our hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from his sin, from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lesson today is from Ephesians, chapter 1, 15 to 23. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the boundless great, greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sealed him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and made him head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life, thanks be, be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, my disciples, but also on behalf of those 
who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I grew up in a small town of 4,000 people. On warm summer Sundays, I would walk to St. Martin's Lutheran Church. As I walked down Mary Street, I would see the plain bell tower of the Free Methodist Church. As I turned onto Broadway, I would see the white siding of the American Baptist Church. And through the trees, I could also see the white-clad steeple of St. John's United Church of Christ. Continuing down Broadway, I would see the umber-colored bricks of the First United Methodist Church. And as I arrived at my St. Martin's Lutheran Church, if I looked down Jefferson Street, I would see the gray stucco of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church as I would hear the tolling bells of Holy Cross Roman Catholic. in the security of my Lutheran church. Every time we shared the sacrament of Holy Communion, we confessed the venerable words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We believe in one church, you could have fooled me. We were Lutherans. I'm proud of it. We were not United Church of Christ. We were not Baptists or Methodists or Episcopalians, and we certainly were not Roman Catholics and proud of it. Could Jesus have known how quickly his one church would become his fractured and contentious church and proud of it? Before Jesus faced his betrayal and crucifixion, the last words we hear from Jesus are a simple prayer. 
for the disciples he loved. Father, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you and me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. I am Lutheran and proud of it. However, the time has passed for the denominational arrogance of my younger years. Jesus prays that within this Lutheran church, you and I might be one with one another. Jesus prays that you and I might be one with all other baptized sisters and brothers in Christ. Any avoidance of other Christian denominations is simply sin. Any division you and I might cause or perpetuate among sisters and brothers of this St. Peter Church is simply sin. If Jesus prays that we followers of his may be one, then not working for the unity of Jesus' church is simply sin. However, there is no sin in disagreeing with other followers of Jesus. Much good comes in prayerfully listening to those with whom you disagree. The Holy Spirit has a way of often working best in those painful moments of disagreement and the insecurity that come with it. However, when we Lutherans disagree with our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, or when we Lutherans disagree with our Baptist brothers and sisters, we should not talk about them. Jesus would have us talk with Roman Catholics and with Baptists. Jesus would have us talk with any brothers and sisters in Christ whom Jesus baptizes into his one church so that we might learn from one another. As Jesus faced his suffering and crucifixion, Jesus prays that we all might be one. When you or I fail to discuss our differences with those with whom we disagree, when you or I work for disunity within the body of Christ rather than the unity found in Christ's love for us, our world sees the one church of Christ as one place in our world where there is no oneness. Any divisions within the Church of Christ are your idea and mine, not God's idea. However, being a part of Christ's Church does not mean that you and I shall never disagree. If you and I are serious, about following Jesus in these challenging times, there will be different ideas and different insights into how best to be stewards of this creation God has entrusted to our care. Hopefully, 
there will be other ideas and other insights into how best serve the Christ who called you to be his forgiving love in this place, in this time. Jesus prays that you and I might be one in our faith and that you and I might be one in your life together as St. Peter Church. Talking about those with whom we disagree is not an option. Talking with those with whom we disagree might bless you and me with new insight into Jesus' will that all his baptized saints might be one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Within the one church of Christ, our divisions, our denominations, and our divisions of denominations are our ideas, not God's ideas. Jesus prays that we might be one. The Holy Spirit is at work in the midst of our divisions, in the midst of our disagreements to do what we have often chosen not to do for ourselves. Our Easter hope of new life is the hope of a beloved Lutheran church committed to taking down the walls we have built between ourselves and other baptized sisters and brothers in Christ as one holy Catholic and apostolic church we pray with Jesus to be one with Christ in cross-like love. We pray with Jesus to live our Easter hope of a world without war, a nation without prejudice, and churches known for their oneness, churches known for their oneness in Christ-like love, churches known for their oneness in Christ-like love.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. We pray for the nations of the world, especially the people and leaders of Mexico, Ukraine, Russia, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong and the Uyghur people, Myanmar and the Rohingya people, Afghanistan, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Iraq, Iran, North Korea, we pray for the people of Uvalde, Texas, and Buffalo, New York. We pray for those in authority, especially President Zelensky, President Putin, Joseph Robinette, our president, Kamala Devi, our vice president, Gavin Christopher, our governor, Diane and Alex, our senators, and Vicente, our mayor. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians, especially the people and children of Buffalo and Uvalde. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that rise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry, especially those whom we name before you. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers like Yuri Travanovsky, whom we commemorate today. We pray for Elizabeth, our presiding bishop, Andrew, our bishop, and David, our bishop-elect. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. God, in your mercy. 
hear our prayers. We're invited to offer your prayers and thanksgivings, ending with the words, God in your mercy, to which the assembly responds, hear our prayer. Unite us with Mary, mother of our Lord, Elizabeth, Yiri, Justin, the martyrs of Uganda, John the 23rd, and all the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the oneness with which you bless us. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With Mary, the mother of our Lord, Elizabeth, Yuri, Justin, the martyrs of Uganda, John the 23rd, and your holy ones of all time and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. Give give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us us our trespasses, as as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the risen Christ dwells with us here, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. given for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name.
God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. <laughs>